Violent weekend in Chicago, another one. Five people killed, 20 others wounded, shootings all across the city, and the youngest victim, a five-month-old girl. But help may be on the way. On, on Saturday, President Biden signed the most significant federal gun control bill in nearly three decades. It's a measure that will toughen background checks for gun buyers under 21 years old and provide billions of dollars for mental health services. Joining us now is the mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot. Uh, mayor, good morning to you. We just mentioned this new piece of legislation. How do you think it might help your city? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me this morning. Yeah, another tough weekend. But what I don't want to get uh, lost in the shuffle is that we are down 15% in shootings and 10% in homicides. But I think what uh, this weekend underscores is that we are washed in illegal guns. And so what the legislation I think will help us is there's a provision um, against trafficking and straw purchasing. And we need our federal partners to be very vigorous in enforcing this new law, it's something we fought very hard for. And I'm glad finally we've seen some positive steps in the right direction. But we need uh, more federal assistance in enforcing this new law. So you just said we're, you're awash in illegal guns there in Chicago. When you look at crime in the city, is that the core issue? Is that what's behind all these shootings? Is that the number one cause? There's no question. 90-plus um, uh, percent of our homicides are as a result of illegal gunfire, um, whether it's um, uh, gang-related. But increasingly, what we're seeing is petty disputes ending in gunfire. So the fact that the matter that... Our police department last year took 12,000 illegal guns off the street, which is more than New York or L.A. combined, tells you the challenge that we face. Our officers are heroic every single day, making the necessary stops, making the arrests, um, and finding these illegal firearms. But we are fighting against a sea of them coming over the border from other states. So gun trafficking is a significant problem for cities like Chicago, New York, L.A., Every major city faces this challenge. So I'm gratified that the federal government finally has answered the plea of victims, survivors, and mayors and other municipal officials that we need additional tools to be able to fight against this tide of illegal guns. You know, uh, Mayor Lightfoot, it's, it's, it's good to see you. I was in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I, I went to a place called True Colors Brewery where they're working with active gang members, rival gang members who are working together. I've never seen anything like it before. And what I learned there over the weekend is that the majority of the people in gangs, it's a very small number of people who are actually violent. And maybe we should target that. Is that the experience in your city, too? You know, you hear gangs, and it's very scary. It's very threatening and very, um, and very sinister. But what I learned is that if you just target the very small number of gang members who are violent, that that could make the difference. Is that the case in Chicago? We start every weekend with another bad weekend in Chicago. There's no question that we've got to be very specific as the people who are driving violence. And, Gail, it's not like in the 80s and 90s in Chicago where there was an established gang hierarchy. What we see are much smaller um, uh, groupings. We call them cliques. Um, but a lot of this violence is also driven by petty disputes among people that aren't necessarily affili affiliated with a, gang. with a gang. But what we need to do is be very diligent in pushing our courts to hold violent, dangerous people in our city accountable. They can't keep getting released back into the streets. And again, I'm mindful of the Constitution, everybody's uh, presumption of innocence, but there are some people who are truly a demonstrated danger to our community. They need to be locked up pre-trial and we would see a much more significant decrease than what we're already seeing in our city. Mm. You know, abortion is protected under Illinois state law. We had a story earlier in this broadcast that chances are that your city, your state in particular, your state and your city as well, will be overwhelmed with people coming in to get abortions in your city. Are you prepared for that? Are you anticipating that? Are you worried about it? Well, I'm certainly worried about it. I'm worried about it for the women who are now going to be forced to travel from their home state um, to state, uh, cities like Chicago to get the kind of reproductive care that they should have as a right in their home state. We've already seen a surge in the number of people coming, uh, particularly after the court upheld uh, the terrible Texas law. And I think that that surge is only going to increase uh, in the coming months and years. So we are getting ourselves prepared 
Um, I uh, authorized an additional $500,000 to support um, our, our reproductive health care uh, providers, but there's more that needs to be done. We need to make sure that there are resources for travel, for lodging, and for aftercare. We shouldn't be in this circumstance, but this is mm -hmm. the reality given what the Supreme Court did to American women um, on Friday. But we will be ready. We will remain a beacon of justice for all, and we will make sure that women who need reproductive care are able to get it in the city of Chicago. Uh, Mayor Lightfoot, we thank you for your time. We know you have a very full plate in Chicago. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, thank you for having me.